Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So, as you can tell by the title, we will be talking about a blizzard. I've decided to call it a blizzard because it seems uh, very likely at this point for it to be a snow event, a snowstorm or winter storm. And it's a growing possibility that, well, it could be a blizzard as well. And what does that mean? Well, a blizzard is just basically a snow that is moving, so it doesn't have to be falling, it could be whipped from the ground. In this case, it would be falling. But it has to be moving at at least 35 miles per hour or carried by wind at that, that's, uh, at that limit. Or, or that speed or causing reduced vis visibilities for at least three hours of I think under half a mile that's a qualification so a uh, blizzard is just basically adding on uh, fierce winds to uh, a, a snow event and again it's looking at this point more and more likely to occur it's definitely not um, overblown I've been tracking this for the you know I, I do admit I kind of hooked on to this a bit earlier than I would typically like to but it's the first one of the year so I got a bit excited but uh, again I've been saying this all along it's looking more and more likely and the storm is still holding on and it looks at this point that the models will uh, just be finishing up their details detailed touches on this system um, but a lot of stuff to talk about so <clears throat> if you guys are new to this channel before I get into this uh, hello welcome I am again not begging you for you to subscribe I'm asking if you do enjoy this I'm just reminding you you can subscribe it helps out the channel a lot yeah um, obviously watch the video first check out the channel hitting the thumbs up button helps a lot as well and if you have any comments or concerns please leave them down below and let's start talking about this blizzard so I do want to say at this point if you recall you've been watching my videos for the past several days it seems that um, the models have picked an area of very heavy snow and at the beginning you know it, it was anywhere from really Minnesota South Dakota North Dakota into Nevada Utah the very very heavy snow at this point it looks as if the, the heaviest of the snow so again not just limited to these areas but the heaviest will fall across Wyoming southern Montana potentially into the panhandle of Nebraska and into northern uh, and northeastern uh, northeastern Utah northern Colorado so uh, I will show you what each model uh, thinks will happen I'm gonna quickly check if the GFS okay yep so this is the newest model of the GFS. I wanted it to kind of wait, or I wanted to wait so this thing hold kind of processes through. And we've just we just reached a threshold in order to see the whole snowstorm, so our blizzard. So I want to show you this now. Up until then, I do want to say that this isn't not occurring in a short range. This isn't imminent, right? I would put that in the title if it was, but um, it's not. It's still a few days away at least. First, we see a lot of rain and high elevation snow across the west from a different system this upcoming weekend. It's not the blizzard. Again. Uh, I started when this was around 250, 60, 70 hours out, and now it's around 100 hours less. So it, it, we made quite a bit of progress uh, towards it, but it's still far out. Notice that moves away. We do have some rain events. Look at that. That is a pretty impressive system across the plains right there. That's definitely in rain. A lot of folks there need, so that's good. But look what's happening across the northwest at the same time. Idaho, Montana, so <clears throat> Nevada, Utah, Washington, southern Canada. We have a lot of snow. Not, you know, a lot more than this previous system brings. I mean, you could see this one over the weekend. And there's not a lot of cold air it's mainly just rain so but obviously with cold air we see a lot more snow we see that obviously cold air that pattern change and look what starts happening uh, we, we see this trough obviously and you can see it's marked by these um, these blue colorations not only in the preset but also in these lines indicating the cooler temperatures and this is kind of brought by a trough in a jet stream and always when we have a dip in the jet stream uh, on the southeastern side right here we have really really the strongest of the winds that's how typically the atmosphere sets itself up and if you have any energy that is uh, willing to pretty much uh, be at this uh, or is there at any time it is usually capable of turning into a pretty nasty system pretty quickly there's a lot of forcing there's a lot of atmospheric favorability so at hour 132 we start seeing this tilt um, tilt negatively uh, and, and notice what we start seeing extremely heavy snow blossoming across a, a very large area you can see this is definitely a large snowstorm for October even for Wyoming Montana look at that into Colorado the mountains right again this is just the beginning of it and I'll show you different models every model has its own little uh, theory if you will you can see this one centers a lot across Colorado northeastern Utah Wyoming or southern central Montana again some bring it further towards the east others don't once this system if you will the actual low pressure makes it onto the plains look at all this precipit drags up this is Wednesday this is now Wednesday uh, morning so exactly 
exactly a week from today, pretty much. And look, look at all that precip. That is some very, very, very heavy rain. Strong thunderstorms, potentially, but mainly a flooding rain event uh, for some. I wouldn't say flooding because it's been pretty dry. Definitely something to know of. And uh, yes, obviously, why I'm calling this a blizzard is, well, look at those tight isobars. If you don't really know much about reading weather maps, it's okay. This is a very simple concept here. We have a high pressure. We have a low pressure. Really, what this does, these little tiny isobars, it gets them really tightly squeezed into a small area. And when that happens, you have strong winds. And it doesn't really matter from what direction. If they're strong and you have snow, it could easily become a blizzard. And usually the blizzards across this part or the blizzard, you know, this, the, the word blizzard it refers to a snowstorm that obviously has very strong winds. And usually these storms occur in this part of the world. It's called like the blizzard alley, which is the Dakotas. The, the, I, I will admit the West, uh, Wyoming and Montana are the, the westerns <clears throat> periphery of the blizzard alley, not really in it. They do see their fair share, but usually again, it's the upper plains that see the most. Um, and into Kansas, Nebraska, South Dakota, Minnesota, Iowa. Um, but again, it does have it does have its fair share of blizzards of you know Montana and Wyoming. So as he pushes forward, you can see the snow does not get dragged out into the plains. The cold air becomes inefficient and we just see a large windstorm or uh, wind and rainstorm and you can see it's cold front drags way far out it does bring some snow to southern Canada once it turns into more of an upper level low it does try bringing in some cool air um, uh, you can see right there especially if there were to be snowpack across Montana that would be um, definitely at least closer to normal air in terms of temperature and I say that because it's been very warm thus far and you can see that we do have a cool air signature nothing impressive and again that's why we haven't been releasing any snow so far are, uh, any snowstorms and whatnot the precip has them there but it's really the lack of cold air and as you see that weekend storm before this big blizzard is all rain and it's only you know the snow is only able to fall once it uh we have that cold air and look at its total snowfall um so yes this is just through hour 192 pretty much encompasses the whole of this snowstorm notice it does bring a bit into this year in nevada across the cascades and whatnot but as we start getting into the uh, wyoming area you can see that the gfs really favors that area the most with heavy snow as well as decent portions and again utah southern montana and Colorado uh, locations here, especially across the higher plateaus, elevations, whatnot, ranges, could be getting well over two and a half feet of snow, which sounds like a lot, and it is a lot, which is why I am uh, obviously talking about this. Notice we do have some snow potentially into the Nebraska Panhandle, even a few inches in some spots. Let me quickly show you what the total accumulated precipitation looks like from this. So this is including rainfall as well. Again, look at the again the snow wasn't falling across these areas, but the rain was, and there could be quite a bit of it, potentially even up to uh, maybe half a foot of rain which obviously was a bit much but um the good thing is that this some of this will actually come from the first system you can see there's already an inch on the ground from uh this weekend storm the rainstorm and then there's that big fall storm still drops a lot of rain and arguably it's a good good thing um, because they need it to maybe not be the best for farmers that are uh, doing, performing uh, harvests under crops that could be a bit of a bog down but in the long term, uh, it's definitely a thing that's needed. Wyoming is also in a drought, so that snowpack uh, will eventually melt either right away as fall, winter's still a bit away and provide some uh, water to vegetation and whatnot, or, you know, will stay across the higher elevations and serve as an early, um, early start p potentially for a good, hopeful snowpack. As we push this model into its previous runs, and we may be wondering why am I showing you previous runs of a model, just to show you whether or not it's been consistent. So this was at 12 today and you could see it showed a lot across montana wyoming with the most recent model run not as much still very impressive just not as much and you could see that again let's just leave it at 240 hours it's still uh it obviously uh, a lot of snow but maybe not as much as what it showed earlier this was at six o'clock in the morning you could see it was a bit less than what it's showing now across wyoming it showed more across montana so notice that there's still a, quite a bit of variation even among one model and there is a bunch of models and each of them have the same type of variation so you kind of see where things could get confusing really quickly deciphering which one has a better handle or which one doesn't uh, but let me show you the Canadian so this is the Canadian model it's another model I want to show you and hopefully this will explain to you um, why again I'm rather confident in this blizzard occurring snowstorm whatever uh, blizzard I'm, I'm pretty sure one will occur but if you want to call that a bit 
too aggressive buying a snowstorm winter storm at the very least so again there's our rain you can see right there this weekend across idaho nevada utah that will not bring that snow it passes through into the northern plains notice we do have quite a bit of rain across the south as well into the carolinas this does right up northeast could produce quite a bit of rain actually uh which isn't really the best of things they've had quite a wet year uh, they wouldn't they don't really need that much more there so hopefully it stays on the lighter side and we do see a little bit of a system kind of out ahead of this trough which again the canadian introduces at a very similar time as a gfs and look there's our system it's already different right from the start there's not as much snow into utah there's less into portions of uh, su southern idaho if you will it only really starts developing into the eastern portion of wyoming and the northern and really more of just northern colorado not even so much northeastern utah and look it brings way more snow into south dakota the, you know rapid city here would potentially be seeing uh inches of snow per hour according to that rate so again this model shows something else you know it brings that snow a bit further out to the plains and look it re even develops a band of snow across extreme northern portions of the oklahoma oklahoma panhandle into southern colorado denver would be picking up some snow boulder um in areas in new mexico also picking up some snow and look, I mean, it's a profound system according to this this model, the Canadian. It kind of develops in two phases of snow and rain. It then obviously connects, and the system continues spinning away, and it, it obviously does have a ton of rain with it. Very, very powerful storm. Let's take a look at the total snowfall. You can see that the Canadian, right off the bat, is much different compared to the european or sorry the gfs model which i showed you just prior um there is a lot of snow across wyoming maybe not as much as what the gfs shows but still substantial amounts there is quite a bit across utah you can see right there it actually centers and shows a little white patch patch which is over 36 inches but notice it brings way out more into potentially north platte even seeing some snow according to this kansas colorado um the oklahoma panhandle and uh look at that into much of south uh look at that look, look at those snowfall totals that's 30 inches in south dakota right there i don't think that'll happen but uh, it shows you the variation and that's very important to take note of this was a, a canadian model but from 12 hours earlier notice it was also further towards the east not as further towards the east as it with this newer one so that's interesting that it's actually trended further towards the east and uh, this is the one yesterday even further towards the west but you could see that the snowfall amounts were high and you could see that the day before that it was more across montana but it's again i would say it's beginning to become likely that at this point we're, we're gonna probably see not the snow really occurring which the models earlier were showing potentially across you know montana at the heaviest into idaho or utah it seems to be uh, really the heaviest at uh somewhere in this area and uh it, it, this, uh, i would include southern montana in here as well this is where the kind of the brunt of the snowstorm may occur and again this doesn't really uh, obviously the heaviest amounts will fall in the higher elevations but the whole state of wyoming could pick up snow even if you're in the lowest of the valleys you know it's it's a winter storm it's not a high elevation snowmaker that's more of a rainstorm and let's take a look now at the european so this is the last kind of big model i want to show you and look so we have that rain system that moves away that passes through and then we start setting at stage for that a big a big precip maker look there we have it there's our little trough becomes more negatively tilted and we see wyoming utah already start picking up a bit of snow already more looking like the gfs rather than the canadian model so it's looking more like the first model i showed you uh, look at this the european brings way more snow into portions of utah southern idaho really just utah and uh it does eventually bring it further towards east but definitely not as uh conservative with the amounts as the canadian was there and look into wyoming right a lot of snow colorado and this does bring it all the way out into the plains but uh, like the gfs it doesn't really bring much snow out into the, the south dakota area nebraska and i would say that's a more likely scenario obviously we have a lot of rain and some of that rain especially towards the south with that cold front could be a, a severe weather maker so we'll have to take a look at that but yes again uh with such that you know that right there would probably be sufficient to provide blizzard conditions with that and i want to show you these snowfall amounts uh they are definitely impressive according to the european model let me show you 240 hours out look at that right there the highest of the plateaus i mean 
47 inches. I would say that's a bit exaggerated, probably even for the highest of the elevations. I would say probably close to 36 inches, maybe not 47. But uh, you know, Cheyenne, the capital, probably close to a foot if this scenario like this were to occur. Salt Lake City may even end up getting some snow and uh, into southern Montana, uh, really Colorado, maybe not Denver, but the area is more uh, kind of in the mountains like Boulder, closer to the mountains. Look at that right there in the Black Hills, South Dakota, up to what is that? That's almost um, two and a half, almost three feet. So yes, it's looking like at this point, every single model is showing this, right? And I'm really happy about this because again, as you've met, pointed out in the comments, viewers, that I've been, you know, I started tracking this very early and uh, it could have obviously turned out to be a dud. It would have been pretty bad for my credibility and whatnot, but thankfully it didn't. And you know, I would be surprised if it did because I usually don't talk about something unless I have some sort of established confidence in it. And in terms of, uh, again, the consistency, it's still all over the place with the models, but the snowstorm is pretty much likely at this point. It's just where it's gonna drop the heaviest snow. Um, the water content. So this is obviously showing the rain across the plains. That's from all the systems combined in the next 240 hours so you can see a lot of rain and that's good relief again but the farmers are farm uh, harvesting across these areas right now so it's it's not the best but it's for the long term it's good utah good rain good rain again some of this will be falling as snow obviously where we see that potentially 47 inches which i think is over exaggerated you know that that would equal a lot of water which is a good thing uh, they need that and uh, you know start that snow pack when uh, when they when they can and uh yeah, so that's definitely a good thing. Now, I, I, I've showed you three models, and it's a lot, it's a lot right? But I want to show you more, and I want to show you an ensemble. I've been showing this every single day. If you recall, I choose the European family, which is a, uh, a group of 51 individual models that form up the ensemble called the European Ensemble. Now, forecasters look at this, <clears throat> not necessarily to make one particular forecast off of one model. They don't just go on, oh, today feels like a 22. That's what's going to happen. No, they take a look at all of them and they see, okay, what's the trend? What's going to happen? Is there more models showing a scenario like this or something like this where it's really not showing much snow? Uh, but peep the amounts right there. That is ridiculous. Almost every single model uh, shows those amounts right there. Some a bit less, but I mean, goodness, those are... Those are really, really, you know, strong amounts of snow across southwestern Canada. Okay, but let's go back to this, and I'll show you a lot of these models. Just run through it. Wyoming, look at that. Again, it favors a very strong snowstorm. This one, again, is very uh, not favoring of a snowstorm. There are still a few like that. There are less and less every single day, however. That one does show a decent snow event, obviously. Um, you know, the 13, or that pink color is really anything above 12 inches, so that's quite a bit of snow. <clears throat> and as we continue portraying this, look at that. We see scenarios that bring it all the way into the panhandle of Nebraska, an inch, or sorry, 12 inches of snow. This one's a bit less excited. Still has some snow, just not as much. This one, uh, it's a bit less across the Wyoming area, but it extends more into North Dakota, so it's definitely interesting if something like that could happen. Um, this one just goes full out, but across Montana and Wyoming, again, you could see that it's, there are some differences, even from this one to that one, right? But it's still less than what we saw at the beginning of the week, which some showed across, you know, Southern Canada. Canada. Some didn't really show any at all, and it wasn't just some, it was about half. Um, but at this point, I would say three fourths show a snowstorm, and about one, one fourth uh, are not really that excited. This one, it's hard to decide. It does show a lot of snow amounts, but it's a bit blotchy. Um, but uh, again, more of a kind of on a, on a conservative side of things, even though it may seem hard to believe if, if some of the mounts are reaching over three feet. Again, it's it's going to be hard to keep this system, again, kind of away at this point. Look at this. This one shows a lot of snow for the Sierra Nevada. It doesn't look likely. It probably will pick up some snow, but not as much as what these models are showing. Look at this one, showing that snowstorm. This one, very much so, shows that snowstorm. This one, it does not. And uh, this one does. This one does. Um, this one does <laughs> in a pretty big way. Um, this one does, but it's a bit uh, on a weaker side. Um, this one does, and it's a bit further towards the east, so it, definitely interesting. This one does uh, very much so. It shows a grayish color right there at its peak. You know, again, again, 44, 48 inches. A bit carried away with those snowfall amounts, but definitely something that, uh, uh, you know, this snowstorm has potential to drop a lot of snow because of how it's formed. I mean, you saw that precip. It could be dropping six inches of water across potentially the plains. If you get even, you know, two inches of that across uh, the snowy side, you get, uh, assuming a 10 to 1 inch ratio, you get 20 inches. So it's not going to be hard to produce a lot of snow from a system like this. Look at this. Um, this one doesn't show much, but it 
does show an increase of snow across the mountains. This one brings it more across Colorado. Denver would potentially pick up a foot right there with that uh, pinkish color. Um, this one keeps it more inland, so again, there are a few models that still are uh, seemingly a bit lost. This one does show a snowstorm, just a bit weaker further towards the east. This one definitely shows one. Um, again, this one's a bit iffy. Uh, shows a lighter event, uh, but it stretches it further towards the east. Um, this one shows decent amounts. Again, this is still very high. You know, this may not look like a big event, but compared to what we're showing with 40 inches, right, this is more reasonable. We have many locations seeing uh, 6 to 12, 13 inches, which is still a pretty big event. Um, you can see this one places that same event, but just a bit further towards the north. This one takes it out a bit. This one keeps it more across Montana still. Um, this one uh, is a bit more across... Uh, more across northern Wyoming. This one, not too excited. No, it does show some snow for the capital of Wyoming there. Uh, this one does bring in some snow across Nebraska. And again, this was kind of like a string of 10 or 10 models that weren't as excited. They still show quite a bit of darn snow, and that's well warranted enough to call it a snowstorm. Just again, when it's compared to models that show something crazy like this, it may seem a bit weaker. But again, you can see that, that there are a fair share of those crazy models, if you will. So. Maybe this snowstorm is crazy to begin with. Um, this one's not as excited. This one, eh, kind of. This one is. This one does a very weird thing. Stretches it all the way out into central Nebraska. I don't think that will honestly happen. Not enough cold air for that. Um, that one is very excited again. This one is very excited. This one is extremely excited. This one is pretty excited. Pretty excited. Yep, very excited. Uh, rather excited. Uh, not so much. Uh, odd scenario and very excited. And pretty excited so again uh, let me just show you one of these models and kind of play them out image by image just to show you that even the weaker kind of looking snowfall maps still have a snowstorm that's pretty big so let's let's choose this one this one looks pretty good um, doesn't look as impressive but if we were to take a oh goodness I think I screwed that up uh, which model was that remind me folks if I could hear you I wish I could I chose a model to look at, but I forgot the number of it. Um, let's take a look back. And which one was it that I chose? I guess we'll just be choosing another one. I don't want to show you one of these crazy ones because then people will be like, oh, you're cherry picking. And honestly, it probably is because I don't think a scenario you know, like this is likely. It's possible. It's not likely. Um, so I want to choose a model that's a bit, again, this one, 39. And I needed to know that because what I'm going to show you right now is go back to the ensembles, click on the United States, click on precipitation type MSLP, and show you this individual model and what it portrays as the precip type. And, you know, I won't do this to every single model, obviously, so I'd rather just show you the 15 day snowfall total, which is what I did, um, because if I showed you like this, every single model, it would be way too long of a video. But look, there we have our pattern change, that cold air, that snow across um, Idaho, into Montana, into Utah. This is now, again, next Monday, so not that far out at this point. And it does, again, look, start blowing that snow up across Wyoming, Utah, Colorado. And again, this is one of the models that looked a bit weaker in terms of the snowfall totals. But again, you can see down on the radar, this would still be a mighty fine system. And once it gets into the plains, obviously, it does start producing a lot of rain. And uh, that snow does really struggle in the heaviest bands there could be some snow the transition and that's because with such heavy precips sometimes the snowstorm pretty much creates enough cool air when the temperatures are marginal for it to transition into snow so that's definitely a possibility and again uh, that would leave with some decent snowfall totals as you saw from that map um what was a crazier scenario i think this model had one of a pretty 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 crazy scenario look at that wyoming a bit more cold there and it just shows a ton of snow across montana look at that coloration is pretty much as heavy as it could get on this map so again not much to produce a lot of snow you just need a little bit of cold air the system has all the dynamics it needs and uh, let's just run this through according to this model what does it have in store for us oh well you can see much of a warming pattern potentially look at all that rain dancing all the way further towards the north at, at, at the second half of october it's probably going to stay warm even after a, a blizzard again that's not really an indication of a pattern just more of a kind of a a, a, a product of a pattern that's uh, kind of all over the place but yes that's basically for today's video i think it's about time for to wrap this up um i showed you quite a bit and i think that's the best i could do uh let's take a look at the united kingdom model see what snowfall it shows uh yeah you can see it's uh really doesn't seem to like the idea of a snowstorm and again i'm showing you all the models i can because there are, st are still models that show a system that would you know produce measly amounts of snow comparatively to to what the other models show but you know when we have the european showing a, a pretty nasty system let's bring this up right there we have the canadian bring a, showing a very nasty system and we have the gfs showing a again a pretty nasty system 
it the confidence is definitely high for a snowstorm. It's just a matter of when and where exactly. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you all on the next episode. See ya. Bye.